Okay, so we're back. We got uh, I got the uh, the old holster, and we're gonna kind of go over it. I found this this holster on Amazon, um, and I added some things to it and I modified it. Uh, and probably one of the things that I modified that I should have left alone was, uh, and you'll see on the TXC holster. This is the part that the side that goes up against your body. This actually helped out a lot. It was a, uh, it's just like a, I got this from uh, Scott Jelinski, uh, Modern Samurai Project. Took a, a yoga, uh, yoga block from Walmart and cut the corner off of it and shaped it and, and super glued it to the backside so that uh, if without it, you can imagine the gun sits like this. With it, it retentions off your body and pushes the grip farther into your body. Also, I went to uh, the hardware store and bought some uh, some regular uh, aluminum angle iron, and I just started filing and whittling away till I come up with this. Hindsight. Um, this should have been a little bit taller so that the, it was in line with the top of the belt where the belt clip uh, rides on the belt. This should have been at least that high, but it's a little short, but live and learn. So and what the thing that I was talking about that I probably shouldn't have done was I cut this out on the backside. It used to come kind of way out here like this. I couldn't, at the time I was trying to do the full combat grip uh, thing, and I'm too fat to do that. I jam my thumb and it tears my belly up. It sucks. I can't ever get a good grip on the gun. I don't like it. Uh, so I found out that, you know, I'm not the only one that does the what Scott Jelinski calls the claw grip or uh, gay white calls a claw grip where you grab the gun and I'll show you here in a minute and your thumb goes over the rear left rear uh, sight post on the gun and then you flag the thumb down to finish your grip after you marry your uh, grip up on your presentation so you can definitely tell this is not a very expensive holster it's it doesn't have super um, I mean, the, the lines are really clean. I mean, for 25 bucks, I mean, it, it has some really good lines. It's not bad. You can't beat it. If you want to try out an appendix holster, you, you, I mean, that's the whole reason I, I, I did this cheapo holster was because I didn't know whether or not I was going to like to carry appendix. So that's why I went this route. And I kind of tweaked it and seen what I liked and what I didn't like. Um, in the end, I could tell as the faster my draw stroke got, the, the more I was tearing myself up because really the holster sits, has the gun sitting too low. And I'm always, I'm not able to get my fingers around the uh, pistol grip. So that was, that's the main thing. Uh, also, it's a, kind of a taco style. It's fold, one piece of Kydex folded in half. So it's, it's quite a bit, I mean, it's kind of bulky. Uh, whenever I show you the TXC holster, you'll definitely see the difference. So this is a $25 holster, has, you know, a cheap, no name, uh, single belt clip on it, you know, has two points of adjustment. Um, it has, you know, retention adjustment here. And then I added this and this right here. So now we'll take off. The uh, well, I'll go ahead and show it to you while I while I'm wearing it because I went with the uh, soft loops. I wanted to try the soft loops out. I have two soft loops, so that was an extra uh, cost. Uh, but man, it's a little bit more of a pain in the ass to put on and take off. But I really uh, I really like the soft loops and I like the setup. When I put this holster on, it was totally different. I know there's a lot of people out there that have probably a hundred holsters. And they just couldn't, you know, they had such a long journey to find the one that, that fit them the way they wanted it to fit and be comfortable. And everything about it has to be just right. 
because you're going to wear it all the time, every day, and it's that close to you. You got to have the right holster. Well, I really lucked out with this. I really, uh, I wouldn't say I was apprehensive, but I was nervous that I was going to spend this kind of money on a holster and still, you know, have issues with it. But I'm telling you, like, this was the end all for me. This is my new holster. Um, and I'm not one to buy new holsters just to try them out. If I find something I like, I keep I stick with it and I just keep using it until it goes bad and then I get another one of the same kind. Um, I might want to switch things out. So you can see that, and I'm wearing kind of a tighter shirt, but you, I mean, you really can't see it. The only thing that you can really see sometimes is if the static clings to the shirt, you can catch the, uh, the magwell you know the bigger magwell in the uh, base plate plus two base plate but I, i'm in texas i really don't care if i print um that much because you know there's no walls against it and most people are not even paying any attention to you you know you're not open carry so i mean it's really to me it's not that big a deal as long as it's not just like this you know and i put a undershirt on so y'all are welcome and yes, my pants are zipped. Um, so you can see how the gun sits. And I'll show you the cheap holster. Look how much how much room I have between here and here. Now, I'm sure that some of that plays into uh, how much um, closer it sits to the body because this one actually does kind of sit away from the body it's not as pushed into me as the cheaper holster because the uh the bump on the back of it is not as large and the retention wing is not as large as that big aluminum monstrosity but this holster is way more comfortable to, to wear i mean you know there's no hindrance i can squat i can move i mean you know you can see the grip right there whenever i do stuff like that but all in all it's plenty uh, you know concealed for me so whenever I clear the garment uh, the first thing I noticed was like I was saying earlier was look at that all that room right there and and it just has a really smooth draw to it and a nice little click right there at the bottom I haven't I haven't tightened up the retention uh, because I like how smooth and how fast it is, it's just really slick. So, we'll clear the gun out for the purposes of the video. Um, set it off to the side. So to take this holster off, you got these really, really durable, really tough rubber, kind of fire hose, rubber boot type material straps. But unbutton that, and then, you know, they go behind the belt and then they close up and then your pants, you know, the belt, sorry, the belt comes in here and then they snap over the belt. All right. So I've really been on this uh, OD green kick. So the back of the holster, we'll start on the back. They CNC uh, their um their molds is i think the way i understood it and so they take it and they make a model and then they mill out the shape that they want and it retentions off the light yeah and they put this bump in here and just like the foam block on my my old holster it re it, it presses up against the body and straightens the gun back up this one is not near as radical, and I found out that, you know, just by wearing this one the past two days that I really didn't need that great big foam block, and it was making it more uncomfortable, but you really couldn't cut the foam any smaller, more, you know, accurately, and it was just a mess. So, you have this bump on the back that helps keep the holster straight, and you would think that being it's hard, that it would, it would be uncomfortable, but it's really not. I have it. Uh, it doesn't bother me in the least. So we have the uh, OD green uh, back on it. And then I went with 
uh, black multicam, which is also the same. It's black and then it has the OD green multicam in it. And then I went with OD green um, accents uh, for the hardware. And it comes, okay, it comes with this retention, uh, this belt claw. And it comes with two different sizes. I put, I have the large, it comes with the largest one in it, but it also has one that's thinner. So it sits, uh, it's not as tall as this. And you just pull this screw out and put it in there. And then check this out. It actually goes back and forth. So the holster itself moves with you without moving, I guess you could say, because that was one thing about the old holster is, is that it constantly moved. Like the location of the damn holster would move, believe it or not, with my fat gut pushing up against it and the belt tight, after about three or four draw strokes, it would be moved. It would either be moved 